Hey there, I'm Robbie Carmen. And I'm Rich Harrington. And welcome to another edition of the Creative Cows DSLR Essentials podcast. And Rich, no podcast series would be complete, of course, without an accessory show. Yes, well, the <laughs> my thing best, is... My best is, Vanna White. Yeah. yeah. It, we, we joke, and the thing is, is that these are the cool little things that you see another person shoot, like, where did you get that from? These are the things that everyone's like, ooh, what is that? So I figured, well, maybe show those. Well, we'll show a couple of them, of course. I mean, we, we could be here for a couple of days if we were going to show all the little knickknacks that there's we've done. Al there's always more episodes. Right, <laughs> uh, always more episodes. And of course, you know, there's a lot of accessories that have to do only with audio or with lenses or with... You know, focus pulling, whatever it may be. We just want to show you a couple cool ones that we found over the years that have come in uh, come in handy. Yeah. Well, the first one I want to talk about here is the R strap. Do you have one of these? I, you've told me about it over the years, but I've never actually gotten one. The Black Rapid R strap is great. It's very, very comfortable, and what it gives you is this nice thread that you could screw into the bottom of the camera, and it's very, very secure. You have the ability, of course, to you know pop on and off. But you just twirl that in. So that's just a standard tripod screw. Yeah. Okay. And and then you know you got a nice latch here that you can actually lock down. Okay. And they make one strap and two strap ones. You can adjust the height. You see here you actually have this little lock, mm -hmm. so you can set for how far it goes back. And what this allows you to do is place the camera right on your hip. Oh, okay. I see and it. so what's nice is you see the camera can hang right at my hip. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to shoot. Just pull it up. Oh, you're like out of the Wild West. It's like quick draw. Yeah. I like it. But notice here that we actually have more points of That's contact. That's what I was just going to say. It's actually, if you pull on that a little bit, it sort of gives you a little bit level of stability out of that. Yeah, still shooters are usually taking it up here, but I actually like it for DSLR shooting because now I could utilize my body and it's distributing all of this across the back, not hanging on your neck. So this would be a perfect accessory if you're going to go, you know, out with the kids or out with the family over the weekend or something like that. You don't want to look like that guy yeah. who is bringing, you know, <laughs> tripods <laughs> and, you know, shoulder mount kits and DSLR cages and stuff. That provides a little extra layer of stability. Or if you want to have a second camera body on you for backup and you are doing all that stuff, but you just want a second body for popping off production stills. Yep, totally. Or just, you know, you're going lean. So I really like that as support. That's just Black Rapids. Very cool. Well, another one that we have here that I think is uh, pretty useful is this guy. Now, people are looking at this going, what the hell is this? Why right. don't you explain to us what this is? Well, there's two ones there. Why don't you open up the large one? Okay. This is, the, the this is the pocket model, and this is a calibration target from PhotoVision. Yep, and here's a larger one. Yeah, so you got perfect things here. I mean, you're the colorist here. Could you do something with this information? Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> and when, when, you know, in productions have done this for years with chip charts and stuff, uh, you know, at the beginning of a segment, but you can also use this to help you white balance and black balance your camera. And basically what we have here is a pure white field, 50% gray, and then pure black, right? Yeah. So you can use, in part, to white balance the camera, get all your cameras pointing at, say, the white, field, uh, white target here, and do that. The other thing you'll notice is right here in the center, there's also a little bullseye here where you can help check focus and stuff like that. Yeah, we really like this. Like, set this on the stand or hang it off of a C-stand if the client's not there yet, and then you could all calibrate the same thing. And check it out. On the other side, yeah. you, got, you got a little more shiny there, but we have a little flexi fill as well. Yeah, you can get them with white, gold, silver. And so you need flexi fills on your shoot anyways to be bouncing the light. This one's small enough that it can go right in your back pocket, and then you can just pop it out for, you know, calibrating the cameras, and this is a little larger. Yeah, and if you get mad at somebody on set, it provides a nice little, you know, fan, or you can actually whack somebody over the head with it, they work well. Passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you got? Well, one of the nice things are on-camera lights, of course. and obviously we want to go to a fuller light, but for run and gun situations, no light versus a light is better. Yeah, and these little guys are actually pretty incredible. I have a buddy who's a, you know, he's a news photographer, first and foremost, stills. But he, just like a lot of other people out there, has been forced to, not forced to, but has gotten into shooting video on his assignments as well for, you know, the, the web and stuff. And he's out in dangerous places, you know, out in battlefields or in, you know, rugged places and can't carry, you know, a standard, you know, Three light kit with him everywhere he goes for a lot of reasons. Well, I mean, you know, if you have a long enough extension cord. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so these guys, you know, there are a lot of different manufacturers for these guys. Um, and what they're nice is that they're, you know, LED lights, right? So you yep. get a nice, consistent, cool. You can touch these as long as you want. They're never going to get hot. Yep. Um, some of them provide dimming. Some of them provide a variable color temperature. And the nice thing about them is they just come with this little hot shoe adapter. Plug them right on top of the camera. And if you've ever seen, you know, say a news photographer out there doing news interviews. 
you just pop that right on. Nice little fill if you have yeah. somebody at night and something like that. They work pretty well. And you, what you got here too is this particular one from Light Panels. They'll sell you different back plates. Right. So here I'm able to use a Canon style battery. Uh, you might have old video batteries, maybe from some of your standard definition cameras. You could put those back into use and start using them. Yep. Really works well, and then it just goes into the standard hot shoe. Well, and the nice thing I was going to mention about this next gadget is the simplest thing in the world. And until you were like, mm -hmm. you actually need one, and you go. Yeah. Where do I find something like that? And this is basically just a hot shoe splitter, yes. right? So this end of it goes into the hot shoe on the camera itself, but on this side, right? So you just pop that guy right up onto there. Yep. Oops, if I unscrew it a little bit. Maybe. There we go. Got it. And so now you have right on the hot shoe, and you could put the light on this side or wherever, yep. put your digital audio recorder here or something else there, and you have an actual split. Now, I've actually just seen one that kind of remind me of that, you know, that rock and roll thing like this, you know? Right. Or like hanging three -way or I love you or whatever. Yeah, three-way splitter where you can have a center and then it goes out actually pretty wide as well uh, to get three items up there. Now, it gets a little unruly with, um, you know, overall balance, right. but it does provide you a nice sort of utilitarian way to get a lot on the camera in a relatively compact package. Yeah, that works well. And while we're talking about things on the hot shoe. Yes, this little guy. This is actually a little mini level which is pretty nice, right? Um, of course, a lot of tripods and monopods and other gear are gonna have sometimes built-in levels, but in the case when you're doing, you know, whatever, you're just gonna put the camera on a wall or something like that, you can yeah. actually really quickly um, get, uh, get a lineup there of your level. Yeah, you do a single level that way, or if you go this way, you actually get a bi-directional level. So you could tell not only are you level left to right, but forward and back, and it's right off of the camera and the lens line. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I think that um, a lot of tripods that have the built-in levels, they're kind of so-so, you know what I'm saying? They get banged well, around a lot. And, it's not know. even that. You're leveling the tripod, but those tripods weren't really designed for the ergonomics of the camera. Right. And so depending upon the plate or the battery grip or what you have, you know, you may have a perfectly level tripod and right. not right. have a perfectly level camera. Totally. So this takes all that benefit of leveling, especially here with the side to side and front to front, front yep. to back, yep. and you could absolutely tell, do I have a straight yeah, shot? Super cheap little guy too. Yeah, a couple bucks. Yep. And you know, you could slip it on and off of the hot shoe really, really easy. Last couple things to talk about, they're very same idea. Mm -hmm. Hard cases so you don't lose stuff and have things bouncing around. How many times have you been out in the field and you know, like your zoom goes dead for a battery? Yep, happens to me all the time. And, and you're shuffling through back. Where are the batteries? Where are the batteries? Is this one new? Is this well, one old? Well, we could do a whole series on bag organization, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. But these, these guys, uh, the, these two cases you have here, I think are pretty indispensable. So the first one you have is actually just a standard battery case for uh, AA or AAA batteries, right? Yeah. So you can just pop in these batteries. And you know, on any shoot, you're gonna wanna have not just the camera batteries, but you'll be surprised how often you'll need things like AA batteries. For yeah. example, on one of my cameras, I have a battery grip, right? But the actual battery grip has a little sled that if I can't charge the regular camera batteries, guess what? I can put in AA batteries into that sled to run. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's always nice to have keep them nice and dry and safe. Yeah, it keeps them dry. It also keeps them from bumping contacts with each other and accidentally discharging. Totally. And you know, this is like a $7 item that you can get at a camera store. They put them by the flashes because really most people from photography are used to putting these batteries in their flashes. Right. Similarly, uh, Pelican, others make these hard cases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and these are actually waterproof. You see that you got the seal on there. Yep. And so it's going to keep the cards, it's going to keep the gold contacts from actually rubbing against each other so you don't get accidental discharge or static. And I tell you, the, I, I got one of these and they're what, like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. And the thing about them is that, you know, in the tapeless world that we find ourselves in, you know, very true with DSLR, this is what it's all about right here. What's yeah. on these cards <laughs> yeah. is everything, you know? And we've talked about, you know, backing up cards and creating disc images and that kind of stuff. But yeah, you want to be really, really careful about these uh, pieces of media. And that's a great little thing because not only is it a hard case, you can toss it around, not worry about if somebody accidentally steps on it or something like that. Also waterproof. Yeah, and I have a real simple uh, sort of mnemonic to help me know which cards are used and not. Obviously with the SD cards, you could pop the tab, but I'll get two cases. Okay. I'll start the day with an empty case and a full case, and in my left pocket, I'll put the case that has empty slots. And in my right pocket, I'll put the cards that are waiting to be used. Mm -hmm. So the cards in the right pocket are the right ones to use, and the cards in the left pocket should be left alone because they're full. Got it. Very cool. So it just makes it really simple. And you know, again, your data, the whole reason you're out there is to shoot and get great footage. You lose a card, you step on it, you get it wet, it's yeah, toast. Totally. 
So that's just a uh, a very small selection of accessories that are out there, uh, and you know we drive our significant others. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Toy. I, I mean, every time I get a catalog, you know, a catalog in the mail, forget about it. I'm you know every, circling everything. Um, so you know, and on your own, feel free to go out there and of course go into the Creative Cow DSLR forum. On there, there's a lot of great tips and tricks that people have given for uh, building your own accessories. Yeah. You know, little things that you know, little adapters that you might need to help you out. Of course, a lot of the rig manufacturers like Red Rock and Secudo and all these other people, they have little you know, adapters and accessories that you can use. But just a, a smattering of things that can help you out. And you know, you'll often you know need to rely on these things. Yeah, and really, the idea for this episode came from there's several threads in the DSLR forum. People are like, what should I put in my kit? What do I need? And everyone's always talking about the big stuff. Yep. But you know, it's these little things that will make or break a shot. Is the shot level? Do you have power? Are your memory cards safe? Can you actually attach a light and your audio? Right. Did you get a right white balance? These are all little things. All these gadgets on the table are less than $100 put together. Yeah, and, you know, and of course, over the, you know, the next few episodes and some of the back episodes that we've done, We've of course talked about some accessories, you know. Yeah. So we're always going to be talking about accessories. These um, are just the little cheap ones. Uh, think of them as stocking stuffers or things you, you don't have to ask your wife for permission to go buy. Okay, cool. So there you have it. some accessories uh, that you might want to look into. Um, be sure to head over to Creative Cow and check out the DSLR forum. A lot of great information in there. A lot of great questions and answers. Uh, be also sure to check out uh, the podcasts that are available on the Creative Cow, including back episodes of the DSLR Essentials podcast. And also be sure to check out the Creative Cow magazine. You'll find tons of articles by working pros who share their ideas and workflows. There's been a lot of DSLR coverage in there as well. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. Thanks for joining us.